today I'm walking in the, fa in the, in the forest and I am very emotional, I'm very emotional. Um, I really want to share why I'm emotional. Because I'm in a lawsuit of the Dutch, Dutch government surrounding my kidnapping, um, I'm being pushed back into my childhood, into my memories. And one of the hard things for me that I'm really emotional uh, dealing with is that people don't understand that um, when I was eight years old, I did not know my father, Michael Jackson, was a huge superstar. Um, he, I didn't see him as the performer that he is on stage. Number one, he was wearing an afro a wig, and his, his, his afro. So he didn't have all this star glamour. He was work. He was um, wearing jeans and two shirts. And I was living in a private estate near the water in uh, Kapaiche, Haiti. And I believe I was uh, sent there in in the end of no, in the beginning of 1982. I was in Haiti. Um, they sent me to Haiti. So I first time I was, I think the first half year, I was in Dominican Republic. And then I went, I was shipped to Haiti, to my aunt Kelly. I grew up with an um, amazing nanny called Maria. Um, she spoke um, Brazilian. Um, she, she was a refugee from uh, Brasilia in um no from from an african country never but she spoke uh brazilian i i i, I don't remember the african country she come but anyway she was a mother of four children and she was my my personal caregiver next to my um nannies maria was the most important woman in my life because uh she cared me as a baby so she had me when I was when I when I was born when I just born. Nobody wanted me. Uh, she was my surrogate mom. She was really my surrogate mom. She was my life. She was my hero. She was my everything. This woman, she was mother of four children, two boys, and two girls, and um, she took care of me. She was my life. Uh, she was to me more important than my own father she was my world um she was the, the type of woman that carried me on her back and the african way when i was sick holding me uh, she was the the woman who feed me before she went home to her family she feed me she took care of me and uh, maria was absolutely my life my life i would die for her i would kill for her um, she was my my basic of everything stability in my life and I loved her and um, she was the one who always watching uh, my na my nannies my nannies were also really great but there was always one problem they always were falling in love with my father so they were always being kicked out so I remember as a child how hard it was losing my, my, my nannies, but when I was seven, I was used to it that uh, my nannies were great, um, but they were all being kicked out. Only one person who were not being kicked out, they were my Chinese teacher. I had a Chinese teacher from zero um, till seven. My first ABC that I ever learned as a child was English. My second was, um, Chinese so I was when I, I remember very well that I was learning how to write and read Chinese Mandarin my father spoke uh, a lot of languages so many people don't know um, he spoke Spanish he spoke Portuguese he spoke um, French he spoke uh, Japanese and he spoke English and he spoke German um, did I forget any language yeah, no, I think I didn't forget any, any, but my father speaks a lot of language. So my basic education was a lot of languages. Because Maria was my basic 
in my mind, in my emotion, she was my mother. Even she was the housekeeper of our house in, in Santa Barbara. And I was li uh, living near the sea. I could hear the sea. I could hear the sea. I could from far away. I could I could see the sea, and we were living in a in a in a white house, and um, I'm so emotional because that was my life. So when I was seven years old, um, my father decided to uh, dump me, really dump me. The Jackson family decided to dump me in Haiti, and I lost Maria. I lost the woman that I was my world woman. I wanted to die for a woman I want to, I will kill for. Maria was my everything. Maria was more important to me than, than my own dad. I lost her. So Maria, she fight for me. She didn't want me to uh, go to uh, Haiti. Um, I remember very well as a seven-year-old, she asked my father if she could adopt me. She said, you know, give, give Moshana to me. I will take care of her and uh, nobody has to know that she is your, your, your daughter. And um, Maria was totally heartbroken. And my father said it will be just for a couple of while because he was planning to tell the world of my existence he, he 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 had no plan to to um to keep hiding the fact he he was a father he, he he my father was like okay now i'm the huge the biggest artist in the world i'm going to share i'm going to share this with the world that i'm a father i became a father but he wasn't prepared i always believed that my father was murdered i was kidnapped from him because he wanted to destroy the the image of that was built of him, and I think um, he was killed. He was murdered. His money was stolen for that. As a child, I I didn't understand what was going on. My life, my heart was just absolutely broken for losing Maria, losing the woman that have been with me uh, all my life. The woman who was happy married and was a mother of four children and um, spoke um, Portuguese with me. So uh, when I hear people p talking Portuguese to me, it's like home. It's, it's really, it's really healing. It's, it's healing. When I hear por Portuguese, it's, it's, it's touching my heart really, really, really deep, really deep. So I lost Maria when I was being kicked out of um, America, kicked out of my home, Santa Barbara, where I've been lived, where I lived since a baby. So I always believe that my father's career was destroyed because there were really people. Sorry. Hello. Hello. I really believe that my father's life was totally destroyed, take down, because he wanted to reveal. He wanted. He wanted out. He wanted out. And um, I, I don't know who. Yeah, I know. I know it's the, the mob. I know that. But I know which which uh, direction. But. I don't have to think about who, but anyway, it happened. It happened. He lost me and I lost him. And the most of all, I lost Maria, the most important woman in my life. I lost Maria, uh, the woman that was my world, my, my absolutely everything. And throughout of these years that I've been in uh, this situation, I, through all of this year, I've been in this situation of um, being kidnapped, going to court um, with the Dutch government, being raped in my adoptive parents. I never had the time to really grieve about what I lost. 
When I was in Haiti, when I was being kicked out by the Jackson family and the Ross family, um, being thrown into Haiti, uh, I, cri I cried for, for two years. I was homesick to Maria, the most important woman in my life. I had fights with my father, Michael Jackson, about Maria, about how much I needed Maria. Oh, God. Hello. Hello. I have to do this. It's the wind. Ooh. So when I was young and I was staying in Haiti for um, two years, all my fights were about dad. Give me back my Maria. Give me back. She's my mom. She's uh, and and I had a hard conversation that my father really screamed at me like, Maria is not your mother, you know. Uh, Maria is not your mother, and and uh, and you're mine. And I and I was like, no, you're not dad. You're not. I'm not yours. I'm I'm Maria. So I, when I was in Haiti, I really started really hating my father that he was selfish. He only thought about himself, and and and, and not, not about me, about how much I miss Maria. So when I was staying in Haiti, I cried for this woman and her amazing husband who was working in construction. He was very, he was very small, very smart. His beautiful children I was crying for her for two years. And, and, and then when my father burned his head, he came back to me and he said, I'm going to take you back to America. I'm going to give you back. I'm, I'm, go, I'm going to give you back Maria. My, my, the last time that I saw my father, he apologized. He apologized for me for taking me away um, from America and taking me away from Maria. So every time when someone asks me about my mother, that my mother is Barbara Jane Ross, I don't care about Barbara Jane Ross. She may bi biologically be my mother, but for the rest, she doesn't mean anything to me. The woman that I see as my mother is, is, is Maria, a housekeeper, my amazing uh, mom, Maria. Um, who educated me from zero to, to, to she was my safety net so i remember before i i was kidnapped my father really apologized of that i lost this Im, Im, so important person in my life my my dad apologized and i cried i cried and i i was happy that he was going to take me back to america and i was going to be with maria again but that never happened because a couple of days later, I was kidnapped. And so No, no, I am, I am 47 years old and I want, I, I want, I, I wanted to talk about it. I want, I want to tell the world, listen, I don't quite, um, understand you that you think it's for me important to say Mike Jackson, my father, he, he did a huge crime to me by um, making me lose the most important person in my life it was our housekeeper maria who have been my my mom uh, throughout of my life she carried me on my back um, she stayed longer and um, with me if i was sick she checked out my, my nanny uh, she protect me uh, she took me to church, uh, so all the gospel and way of of singing. Uh, she educated me. I was lucky to to know the feeling of uh, a family being welcome. Her family absolutely welcomed me, and and they were they were amazing to me. I w they make me feel happy. 
and uh, my most fun memories of Maria is being with her, with her family. Um, the way that she made me feel welcome. I was a part of the family. Um, playing with her children. And the way that my father treated her very lovely. So, um, yeah. Let me go this way. Yeah, go there. So my um, I think one of my favorite memory is you know I was Michael Jackson's child so there was a lot of uh, security always near me and Maria she was very small had a beautiful booty and always wearing a, a skirt or a dress she wasn't the kind of woman who liked to wear pants no she didn't not often and I was very small, and I know walking with her in the market of California, and she was just really pushing the body cart away so that she and me could have our privacy of doing our shopping. And I love the way that she tried to push that man away to stay away from me. And... Um, She raised me with so much love that I always believe she made me. Uh, she she made me uh, what I am today. She made me. And um, so when I talk about my life, I, I was thinking, you know, I cannot talk about my life if I don't tell my followers, my fans, as an author of what Maria means to me. I have talk to her oh god i was just a little bit shocked ah my doggy doggy okay so um maria was the most important woman in my life uh gr growing up and i Till the day that I die, she she holds a very special place in my heart. And I wrote about her in my book, Thriller Betrayal, uh, that she, how important she was um, about me, for me, for me. And I felt like, you know, having my channel here on YouTube, I, and the last couple of years since my father was murdered, uh, she's the one I talk the most about. Maria about how she's my hero and how how amazing um, she she is. So I think I have to really talk about her. And it took me a long time to find the right moment to talk about her. Um, she was a little bit older than my than my father. I don't know how much older. No, she was quite older than my father. Maybe she was ten years older than my father. But she's the one who loved me. She, she's the one who, who moved the world to me. You know, when I was sent to Haiti, um, throughout of my life from zero till uh, seven, I have never, never heard this woman scream and yell and being angry, never. But till that moment when my father decided that he was going to the Jackson family and the Ross family want to kick me out to Haiti. That's the moment that I heard um, Maria scream and yell and, and being angry to my father. She was really, she was really an African strong, powerful woman, yelling at him like like crazy. You know, you know. She was so angry that even her husband really had to hold her back. So she wouldn't kick my father. It was the most unbelievable experience in my life as a seven-year-old girl. I was thinking, wow. I mean, that, this, this, this woman was my God. She was my mom. She was my savior. She was my angel. She was my everything. I have never saw her exploding that way. So I remember she, uh, she begged my father, you know, and no matter how hard it was also for her, she didn't left me. 
she stayed with me. She cried. And then... I had to say goodbye to her. And I, in my time in, in, in Haiti, I miss her so much. I couldn't call her. I couldn't write her a letter. Um, I, I, I hate it. That, that big, huge Michael Jackson star that I didn't know my father was. God, I, I hated this man for, for, for doing this to me. I hated him. And then... And then I was kidnapped. Then I was brutalized. Then I was hurt, abused. My identity was stolen from me. Horrible things happened to me. And and I kept I kept my love and I kept everything she 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 told me. Everything she educated me. Everything. When I'm saying that Michael Jackson is my father, to me, it doesn't mean anything. To me, it doesn't mean anything because I wasn't his priority. His life, being an artist, was his priority, not me being his daughter. And I think this is why he, it was easy for him uh, to, to let people get into his mind uh, adopting the other children that he did because I did understand later on um, I asked someone that knew my father why did he why did he uh, not have his own DNA children why and then they said to him because my dad was so hurt that he didn't he didn't want to go to the to this again to the same trauma so he, my father knew if he I believe that Debbie Rowe is also the mother of uh, uh, Prince Michael Jr., the third, the third uh, child, the second son. Okay. Nice that I hear French because I was raised also French uh, for two years in Haiti. So this is really, <laughs> I heard German walking here, now I hear French. German was my father's favorite language. His best friends are all living in Germany. His best friends are all German people, German related people. And French was my second language. I uh, had to learn that very quick. So every morning I had French le le lessons for my niece, Angelina. And, um, So when I talk about um, my father, yeah, I was, I was telling that a friend of my father told me, I said, why did he adopt his children, his two children? They had DNA, not his. Then they said to me, my father was very traumatized. He knew if he had these children, uh, they could never do this to him again for what they did uh, to me. And the friend of my father, he told me an, a, a secret about my father. I will never, I will never share. I will take that in, in my, in my, in my grave. So, this, this children of my father, uh, these three children, he adopted. Um, it, it was really a smart move to get his money, kill, kill Michael Jackson, and get his money. Um, in the road of me being kidnapped, nobody expected me to survive. I, I survived it because Maria, the woman that I love the most, she educated me. And Donald Trump, Donald Trump educated me. Donald Trump was also the one who bring me back to my father. I went to see, I went to see uh, Donald Trump uh, in New York. Uh, when? Um, in 1998, I went to New York and I wanted to see Donald Trump, and but he wasn't there. Um, so someone called him 
and probably Donald Trump had me on some kind of list that uh, if someone ever hear this name they have to make a copy of my idea or something like that but anyway uh, Donald Trump he was the one who find me and could um, tell my father Mike Jackson that I was real so through Donald Trump and Mike Jackson my father find me back because Donald Trump uh, had a copy of, of my Dutch passport and he showed it to my father and and the, his bodyguard for Donald Trump had to make a photo with me where I was standing and Donald Trump was uh, planning to see me but I had to fly back home I couldn't wait for him to see him so some people of his security asked me how do you know Donald Trump uh, it's not normal that he wants to make an appointment with you and if Donald Trump wanted you to stay talk to you then you stay so they were and I was like yeah look I have a child at home in the Netherlands I have to no I didn't have a child yet no I would go I was going to be pregnant that year that wasn't I had responsibility at home I had to so responsibility was 1998 that year I will become pregnant so I didn't know I was become pregnant so I had responsibility so I was thinking no 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 oh yeah so it was Donald Trump who find me and in 1998 I was pregnant yeah that was it so I couldn't fly back to New York to see Donald Trump but Donald Trump was already uh, busy with my father that he found me and then the people of Sony this they 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 uh, contact me and then it starts to get me to America so the after the birth of my of my son 1999 they tried to get me to America but I was going through a divorce I found out my my ex was a drug addict but in the meantime my father already hired uh, hired uh, um, how do you say detective um, to know if I was for real so then they know I was for real and in 2001, I met my father again after 17 years when I was kidnapped. So it was Donald Trump who made it all happen um, between my father and me. And it was also Donald Trump who ed educated me about kidnapping, all this kind of stuff. And Maria, of course. The reason I survived so long, I'm still surviving so long, because um, I, 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 I was born smart. I'm, I was born really smart, so this is why I survived my kidnapping. So Donald Trump is very important to me, and um, he's the man who loved me the most. And um, I know whatever happened, he will always love me. I love him. He's very dear to me. Maria and Donald Trump are very dear to me. That's it. I'm so emotional, I don't know what to say anymore. I'm going to close up because I feel like I'm going to cry very hard. I don't want to cry very hard. And um, But I just want to dedicate this video. If Maria is still alive, I want to say you are my God my god my angel i love you and there's no way in life in hell i can ever forget your unconditional love to me to me you are my mom i remember everything of you maria if you are still alive today you see this video i love you very much i hope you're doing well and maria if you have died and you have the seas. Remember, I've always loved you. My thoughts are with you. Thank you for raising me. Thank you for putting so love in my heart that I can survive all this hate around me. I want to say thank you to Maria's children and husband. If you were still alive today, I love you. Thank you for my amazing childhood. Uh, because without your love, I will not be nothing. I will not be nothing. Was Michelle Petit Jackson from in the Netherlands? In the Netherlands, and um, 
my dedication to my most amazing woman in my life, Maria from Africa, from the country where they speak Brazilian, uh, Portuguese, I mean Portuguese. Brazilian is always Portuguese to me, that's why I said Brazilian, but she wasn't from Portuguese, she was from an, an African continent. And most beautiful, beautiful people that uh, could hold me, love me as a baby. And to my ex nanny, I know you signed a confidential agreement with my dad. I'm hoping you will break it. When a lawsuit starts to run between me and a Jackson family, I hope you will come forward to defend me of the crime that they did to me, the Ross and a Jackson family. I hope you will find me worth it to break your contract and tell the judge you were my nanny and you love me and I love you. It was my Shannapati Jackson. I will keep you updating about my court day. In October, I will have a verdict surrounding my kidnapping to the Belgium, to the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated. To my followers, thank you for following my story. And to Maria, if, if you pass away or you're still alive, just know I love you forever. You are my hero. I love you. I love you for life.